that's his laundry and stuff, but I'll wash our laundry and I'll fold his laundry and I'll put it away. And I'm actually, I steam his clothes. She does 10 times more than me. So nobody should feel obligated to do anything like this. Just saying. Aw. I just, you do so much that that's like, I enjoy doing that for you. I love doing stuff like that for you. I do. Why are you looking at me? No, like, eh, I'm no, just, I agree with you. you. I do so much. Let's keep you it mindset. You do. You do a lot. And <laughs> um, I think one thing that changed me as a person was meeting you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Me and you. Holy shit. Yeah. Forgot about that. <laughs> that's kind of a major thing. I don't know where I would be right now in my life or me personally if mm-hmm. it, if I never knew you. No, 100%. I I literally couldn't imagine. Yeah, because I was at a place when I met you, like I was bumming. Like I, was, I felt, you know, living in my parents' basement and stuff. You are my paradise. I can't deny you make me high. You are my paradise. I can't deny you make me high. You are my paradise. Hey guys, welcome to episode eight, eight of our podcast. Eight. Um, that se- sounds weird. I yeah. Think. Oh, you gotta stand here. Aww, People hey, seem to like you. I think um, they just watch her. Yeah, they probably do. So we we're talking <laughs> tonight. Uh, we have a kid free weekend, and we were like, "Doesn't happen often." Yeah, definitely doesn't. We're gonna have a couple drinks, and she's always like, "We don't want to come across like we're always drinking." Then people keep saying the same thing to me. You're annoying. People keep saying the same thing to me. They keep saying, like, don't care what other people think. Don't care what other people think. Do your yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, within limitations, don't right. be disrespectful or anything like yes. that. But, right. So not caring about what other people think. To a point. Um, yeah. We want to talk about that. We do. I think it's important to be your own person. And yeah. uh, there's... 8 billion people in the world and they're all going to have a different opinion of you, what you do, what you look like, what your job is, you know, how you parent, everything, yeah, your hobbies. Judge you all the time. Yeah. 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 And you still have to be happy, do what you want to do as long as you're not harming yourself or anybody else. Just yeah. have fun with life. That's the whole point of life. <laughs> yeah. And you know? find ways to be happy, being a decent person, just be good to other people. Man, that transforms everything around you. Yeah. I feel like we say that all the time and I'm sorry if it gets annoying, but that's like our motto of life now is just like be kind, help others. And it does transform everything. Mm-hmm. You think differently, you feel <laughs> differently. You love differently and people will feel like that towards you also. Yeah. The good energy you put out, you're definitely going to get that back. For sure. And um, we started this Facebook group and uh, can't believe yeah. we had like, we have like 510 people or something already, oh, which Betty, is crazy. That's and, insane. I don't know. I, uh, I just feel annoying doing all this shit because I don't know. I feel like me a year ago would have been like, all right. I'm not doing that because, like, get it, dude. yeah, right. Like, you would be annoyed if someone's yeah. like doing stuff like that. And but I get it. we need to care, but less about what people think. And we've had so many people reach out to us, and we still do. Um, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, like almost daily. Yeah, really. And a lot of podcasts um, promoters that are fake, and it's it's so absurdly annoying. Um, we get so many of them. Like, you know, and I understand they're trying to do the thing, they're trying to make a living. They're all for the most part from India. It seems it's, to be, but it's almost like. The way you feel when you you feel like you're annoying people mm-hmm. with posting stuff all the time, that's yeah. they're trying to reach out and grab people with their job. Yeah. So it's like you know, if people don't like our content and don't want to watch us, then you don't have to, and that's fine. Yeah. And it's just like their job if they're they want to ask us, hey, you want us to promote you here, pay this. We don't have to use them. We yeah. don't have to do that. Yeah. So exactly. it's, kind of, it's kind of the same thing. So they're just doing their yeah. job, I guess. Um, but it is pretty cool because, you know, a few other podcast groups have reached out to us and we yeah. still talk to them. 
Yeah, they, they keep doing this thing. They keep doing like shout outs for us. So we definitely feel like we, we need to watch their content. Um, we watched a little bit of um, the Eye Opener Society stuff. Seem like really decent, real people. Like down um, to earth. They talk about like really cool stuff. Yeah. And that yeah. nonsense and deep thoughts. Like that guy yep. seems pretty fucking real too. And, yep. uh, you know, just seem like good people. And we recently had another person reach out to us. Oh man, I actually don't know what her real name is, but she's, I didn't realize she's nearly as big as she is. She's into news and whatnot. And she has three podcasts and she has, I can't imagine one of hers has 32,000 followers. I was like, holy shit. And um, she was talking about collabing with us, which was like insane. But we had a message from her and it's just really cool. Cause she sounds so professional yeah. and kind and nice and chipper. And yeah. it just sounded really good. Yeah. No, she seemed you know? pretty real when she, her voice, you know, she sounded like she's a pretty like, she sounds like she belongs in news or something like she that. She knows what she's doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Just she very real, does. confident, and all that. You know? Yeah, and I mean that in all good way. But yeah, um, yeah. So check out their content too. Um, but yeah, we just we had a lot of feedback on our Facebook group, and um, and I do this thing, and I realize I do it where I I can't look into the camera. I'm and always it, looking at you. So, so like... yeah, we we had this um we had this guy he. <laughs> He's um, doing some of our like shorts and stuff. He's developing for us from the Philippines and he's real. He's just, he's like, Hey, if like I can help you, um, will you, you know, kind of help me type of thing. And, you know, I tip him here and there and he's pretty cool. So yeah, he's doing a lot of work, but he, he says, I mean, you need to look at the camera more. You need to look at the camera more. So I try to look at the camera more, I but it's just, said that too. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Yeah. And yeah. it's just one of those things. Like, I guess it's like eye contact. Not everybody's good with eye contact. I try to be, I'm not always good with when it. When there's but... a real person in front of me, yeah. I'll stare at your eyeballs all day when you're talking to me, but well, like, that can the be camera's weird too, different. But... you know, yeah. it's weird. It's, yeah. It's definitely different. But anyway, um, yeah. I'm yeah. going to get cut off on tangents a lot tonight, so I apologize. That's all right. Time. It's just this podcast episode, I think, is going to be kind of things that have um, affected us in certain ways or well, changed us in certain it, it ways. It changed us because that's what that group, that post is about. You know, like mm -hmm. one of us posted, you know, like post something that changed you. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are commenting on there with a wow. really deep stuff that I. Or just, surprise are even saying yeah, on there, the, really. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people, some of them we know, some of them we really don't know that well. Mm -hmm. And um, like a lot of them I don't know. And I'm just hearing these stories that are just like, wow. Um, yep. You know, I've always felt weird because people always judge me for being so like uh, quick to overshare. And that that's me. That's who I am. I've always, I don't know, I can't shut my mouth, I guess. <laughs> but it's helped me, especially <clears throat> it helped me this past year because a lot of people bottle up stuff and I just can't shut the fuck up. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, just... I feel like I am a very open book too. Mm -hmm. Feels good to get it out and it's good to get it out. Yeah. Um, at, you know, the right times and stuff into the right I people. I think, I think there's n almost, almost no, there's no reason not to, because I think it helps people. I think people, when, when they're able to talk about their issues, mm -hmm. they relate to other people. And some people are too proud, They're, you know? And... Yeah, or I think some people are scared to say stuff. They don't want to be judged, which I get that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. That's huge. Um, yeah. But also, I feel like the more people talk about their stories, society will change because everyone on the outside thinks everyone's life is perfect. You yeah. Know? I think they really do. And when you're like, oh, my gosh, a person went through that. What is your story? You went through that? Holy yeah. crap, I didn't even know that. Like, that's crazy. No, you know, that that whole saying, you know, I go back to um, Eddie Pierno's podcast, Your World Within, which I've been freaking obsessed with lately. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend him. Highly, Highly recommend. fucking recommend him. Yep. Anyway, um, I've shared him with a handful of people, and a lot of people have said a lot of positive <laughs> stuff, and um, it's corny motivational shit for the most part, but he seems to be a real fucking person that at one point mm -hmm. was a normal person like me, and he's inspired me. So anyway. Get back on point. What was I just talking about? <laughs> Holy shit. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I, I do want to say one thing about Eddie, though, is that the way he talks, you get so connected with him. Mm -hmm. And you're like, he was a real person or whatever you just said. Like, he still is, is. Is a but, real person. Yes, but I feel like since he's sharing so much of his emotions and his feelings, like, he's becoming better and better in every yeah so that he does you're like you know oh. there's they say that corny thing i've been using hashtags on that vulnerability is strength or um 
strength is vulnerability or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a real thing because when people see that, holy fuck, like you're doing as good as you're doing and you're going through that Mm -hmm. and people are just like, they kind of look around and they're like, I have no smiling. Well, not even just that. Like a lot of people have talked to me, like they look around at their life and they're like, I have no fucking excuse. Mm -hmm. If you're able to do what you're doing, you know, and like, and then I talk to people that have had way, way more issues than me, like things that make my issues look like nothing. Mm -hmm. Like in my issues to me, you know, at one point I'm like, I've, I gotta be having the worst life or the worst yeah. you know, situation out of anybody I've ever known. Then all of a sudden I talk to a couple of people and I open up to a couple of people and I'm like, holy fuck. Like, and then I realize, you know, after person after person where, you know, I'm just talking about life or whatever, like everybody's going through shit and I'm, you yeah. know, and I've talked to doctors, I've talked to high level executives for companies in like, where you think their life's perfect. Oh yeah. Yeah, and like everything. their lives are just as, if not more fucked up than yeah. anybody's, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, it goes to show you like, you cannot judge anything. You, you can't cannot assume anything. And you can connect better with people by opening up more than you'll ever yeah. be able to connect with people. And like, then you think about it. It's like, what is more important than connecting with people? Yeah. And I also think a lot of people when they're telling their story, there's so many people out there going through the same thing that you're going through, not just but like something not as bad or something worse. It's like, holy, mm-hmm. like your story is like mine. Yeah. You know, and there's people we've talked to in the last couple of days or a couple of weeks where we're like, what? A couple like, months, a few months. Yeah. I think it's or been just like, like four or five months, actually. Just Yeah. But like some of my friends are talking about stuff or today oh my gosh, talking like, about stuff. And I'm like, yeah. What? Um. And, well, they did say something also about, um, I, I guess you got to go through the bad stuff to really appreciate the good stuff. I'm like, thank you for saying that because I well, feel like. I, I want to specifically say, um, just because she yeah. was talking about wanting to come on her podcast, talk about Alessandra, your old friend. <laughs> so like Alessandra, me and her go way back, like way back. Um, we went to school together <laughs> and she has gone through hell and back. She fought, fought her way out of there and she's doing okay right now but she says she probably wants to come on and be a guest and um it almost made me want to cry because i love this human being so much she's an amazing person and just having her want to be on our podcast to tell her story like tears at my heartstrings you know (laughs) it's okay arrow come babe (laughs) Sorry, she, our dogs are a little cray cray. Well, not both of them actually, she just, just their border collie. Fetch. Yeah, she, yeah. She's an attention whore. Yeah, she definitely sure. is, and this one is always doing this right here. Oh, um, lady. But yeah, so um, Alessandra's story. She, it's not just one story. She's got a handful of stories of strength. Yeah, I can say that I, definitely, and I think people need to hear it. People uh-huh. will connect with her and see how amazing she's doing right now, and maybe it'll give them hope. I, I know it will. I hope more than anything, just because the most powerful story I've ever heard in my entire life is, I think, your story. Like, I think you've been the most inspirational person in my entire <sighs> life because of your story. And your story is the best. It's the best story I've ever heard. I'm dead serious. <laughs> and anybody that heard her story would probably agree. But it just sucks. We're at a point right now where she kind of can't. Um, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe in a few um, years, that'd be cool. I think there's bits and pieces I can talk about for sure, but yeah. um, the majority mm-hmm. of it, I cannot, <clears throat> Yeah, you know, uh, which is my own personal reasons and whatnot yeah. right now, why I can't. Yeah. Like um, your story doesn't have to be about that though, because our story is our literal entire lives. You know, that's right. something on the, on that podcast to talk about. It's like you essentially are painting your picture every day. You are, you know, yeah, you're gathering are, your, um, tools and stuff that you need Mm -hmm. you're learning what you need every day and using them every day so it's just like a cycle you go to sleep you wake up you're learning you're changing hopefully for the better trying to you know and what's what do you think your life-changing because i can think of like an earlier life-changing moment that freaking you think for me no for for me no i'm just saying like because i'm we were so worried about like what are we going to talk about and we're trying to write stuff down but i now i'm kind of having things come to me well i think just that might help um so i think when people just like pass away i would like my grandparents grew up with me 
what grew up with me. I grew up with my grandparents. I'm very lucky for a long time. And my kids yeah. knew them and they were everything with our family. And so when they passed away, it just, things got kind of like, not darker, but something was missing. And I think a lot of people can relate to that when they lose their grandparents. It's a huge thing because grandparents are everything. And you just love them so much and you know that they love you so much. And it's like holidays are different and stuff like that. But I just feel like sometimes things feel a little bit more empty without them. And I think since since that loss, you know, every year, like every holiday just seems like, you know, diff- <clears throat> different. Sorry. <laughs> the dog, um, the dog is just staring me down. And I, I just think. You know, it's it's weird that you mentioned like with your grandparents is because I was so close to my grandma mm-hmm. and like. I never really remember like mourning over her. Like I was like, she had the best freaking life. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, she and my grandpa died a few years before her. And I don't know, she was, you know, bumming or whatever. You know, it's almost like it's weird. I just don't ever remember being like super crushed. Right. You know, not like my uncle or my sister. Um, I was probably, oh my gosh, how do you know? I don't feel horrible. Like when, I don't. Like I don't. High school, I don't know if it, like... no. I believe I was. I want to say like nineteen or so, but it might have been. Okay. Yeah. I don't think she. She never really got to know the kids or anything like right. that. So. Yeah. Hmm. And it, it's kind of crazy. I think when people get really old, they get. Maybe they're not all like this. This is how my grandparents were. My grandpa passed away first, and then my grandma. And my grandma, I remember when he passed away, she was like, oh, he finally went to sleep. And I'm like, why did you have to say that? It just, like, that was just so... Your grandma said that about Yeah, him. and it just makes me cry right now, because it's, like, the words. Like, oh, he finally went to sleep. <clears throat> like, oh, my... Mm. It just, it was yeah, really, but, really like, cool. we talked, like, the other day. This is really recent. This is a real conversation. Like... <clears throat> I said to her, I'm like, you know, there's going to be a day where one of us is losing the other person. Like, unless we die at the exact same moment, which is quite unlikely, but. Yeah. And then I. Like, and she's like, oh, don't talk don't like talk that. Don't talk about but, that. Because it's sad. No, and I don't want to be no, sad. No, sad. I, I get that. Like, I don't want to be sad either, but it's, it's so important. Reality, and I know. The, the more you think like that, mm-hmm. the more you appreciate the now. Yes. And I, I think agree. like that often lately because I know how quickly life can just say, fuck you. Mm-hmm. and just change in a fucking moment because all these stories I hear from people this year, every one of them, yeah. it's like out of nowhere between cancer and like their friends and family that have all been diagnosed with cancer. Yeah, That's all over the place, you know, which I could go on all night talking about that. Cause I don't know. You know, that, a lot of people that you know, a lot of people that are going through that stuff. Yeah. No, I, through it. Yeah. This year. Yeah. You know, and some of the best people I've ever known, you know, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, yeah. I don't know. So I think just losing people are really, really close for me anyway. My best friend lost his freaking mom and his dad in the last couple of years. Um, and he actually he tuned into this podcast. So he'll probably yeah. appreciate it. So I, th- I mentioned him being a good guest on here and he yeah. was, you know, cause he's, you could tell talking to him. I haven't seen, I is one of those like long lost friends. I haven't talked to in a while and you know, can talk to somebody you can just see it in their eyes you know you know they've been humbled mm-hmm. and you respect it because you know they've been through hell but yeah she's snoring she's snoring <laughs> into the mic <laughs> oh she snores all the time by the way when we're trying to sleep um I'm, that's i'm not gonna be able to ignore that <laughs> arrow's coming over here she's, yeah, she's, she's all right okay she's like, are you all right uh, uh, Wow, yeah. this so with the death of people, I think people being born changed my life. I think my kids changed oh my, gosh, my yeah. life. And I know people say it all the time, probably, Oh, my kids changed me and everything. Yeah. And for everyone that says that, yeah, they they probably did. Yeah. I think they do for everyone. Well, not everyone, most people they do. Because mm-hmm. you want to do better and take care of them better than anybody oh, in the world. I was such a lazy piece of shit for so long though. Like I did nothing but play video games. Mm-hmm. For a long time, like, mm-hmm. uh, like the first few years of the kids' lives, just like, and I, it wasn't even that I played games. Like I loved, I was a wicked hardcore for people that don't know what it is called World of Warcraft. I played World of Warcraft for like, 
guessing like eight years or so on and off. But like, I, it was one of those things where I always like being good at, if I do something, I want to know that I'm good at it. And it was one of those things I was definitely above average, like significantly above because average. Because you played all the time? Is that no, cause you, you can't just play all the time. There's people that played all the time that sucked. I was genuinely good at it. I mean, I was in one of the, I think the top 200 rating guild in the entire world for a very short what? period of time. Like that, that's crazy. You don't know how crazy it is at that point in time. It was still vanilla. So there was still, there's still probably like a million <laughs> guilds out there. I'm guessing. But anyway, my point is, um, yeah, yeah, we all, we all have memories. Well, we all have things that change you us. Know. And you know, if you can better from your past, like, well, with you saying, you know, you, you're like, I was a piece of shit for a, a while because I played games all the time. Like, I mean, I, was, I wasn't a bad person, though. I just, right. well, something just, I regret. I missed well, out on so many good years. You to spend years more and, time yeah. with your kids. Oh, my gosh. You know? yeah. So, yeah. like, I did stuff with my kids, but, you know, I, I know I went out a lot. Yeah. You know? And I could have probably cut back on that. Just no. Just kidding. Um, you know, I think as parents, we always want to do better, we always yeah. want to give more more time with them, everything. We always want to do better. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, that's a good good goal to have is to try to do better. That's the whole point of life is to try to better yourselves. But when yeah. you have kids, do better for them and show them how to be better. Right? Yeah. Hmm. So you were bullied in school. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a topic. So yeah. no, not, not too, uh, dude, like fifth grade, I think fourth and fifth grade. I don't know what it was for me. It's funny because I have a kid that went through this too. I, I think both of them. Uh, no, not both of them. Anyway, um, you know, just that went through shit. And, you know, man, it's it's such a difficult thing. When It's hard when you're a kid. It's even worse when you're a parent. Because mm -hmm. when you're a kid, like it's one thing for you to deal with something. but Because you had the ability to do something about it. But when it's your kid, it's like you, you – Sometimes just mean things happen to kids and it's just, it's just fucking sad. Kids can be really cruel. Oh and, my God. Yeah. Um, it is really sad because oh, if they just knew what they were actually doing, I think they yeah. know, they know that they're being mean, but if they actually knew I did what they're things. doing, like I remember yeah, some of the stuff you've told me, I'm like, you what? Yeah. Like when I was in third, third or fourth grade or whatever, you know, I, I just <laughs> said some things like to just get somebody else's attention, the mm -hmm. reaction. I was mean. Yeah. yeah. I remember to this day, but you know, and I, I get it. People just, you know, some people I think are just so negative, so miserable. And that's the way they go. You know, yeah. and the kids, they pass it upon their kids and their kids are like that. And... Mm hmm. Unfortunately. Oh, one sec. I'll be right back. You can keep going, babe. All right. I will maybe tell a quick little story about when I was kind of bullied, I guess. I was really nice and really quiet in giant school for most of my childhood. Um, yep. I was on the bus one time and there was this girl. So my hair used to be wicked long. My mom would French braid my hair every day. And for no reason, I wasn't mean. For no reason, this girl came and just undid my braid. She was just pulling it out. And I'm like crying. Of course, I wasn't like turning around and saying stop doing that and crazy and there was other people on the bus and no one did anything i i don't understand i don't know why people are mean like that for any reason um but that actually stuck with me and it wasn't like she hurt me she didn't say anything mean she just was doing something mean for no reason you know that's and she was a great above me so maybe i was like nervous or scared to say anything or try to um, stand up for myself I mean, yeah, but I think that's one thing that us as parents need to maybe try to teach our children when stuff's happening uh maybe kind of have a backbone and say something stand up for yourself it's okay to tell people to stop being mean and if they're not go and tell a teacher or an adult or someone like that um I just I feel bad because I know what it's like to feel bad in school um why were people mean? So Eric, when that girl on the bus was mean to me, she didn't. I, I, it's so weird because it's like, oh, not really bullying, but it kind of is. Like she put her hands on me, took my hair out, whatever, yeah. made me cry. That made me sad. Stuck with me. But no one hit me. No one was like really mean to me. I was friends with everybody. Oh in school. man, yeah, I remember. Like I remember staying in a circle of of like a handful of guys, like people that are you know like some of them like I respect. I'm friends with now. Like mm -hmm. if, I, if I saw them at a bar or whatever, I would 
you know, be happy to see them. Yeah. But, uh, like, I just remember, like, throwing me on the ground, taking turns, and I would just <gasps> laugh. And I would just laugh, <sighs> like, you know, and it's like. You're, like, trying not to cry? No, maybe. I don't know. I just remember people fucking with me. And I'm, like, then I hit, you know, I think, like, high school. And, you know, maybe I've always been, I'm definitely a different person than a lot of people. That's for sure. Yeah, obviously. But um, I've always been pretty nice to people, you know. So I think um, in in life sometimes, most of the time, the ones that are pretty nice to people, that aren't mean to people, <laughs> that don't pick on people, uh, don't have their backbone yet, yeah. obviously you're easy prey. Yeah. And I think when I was younger, you know, I just, you know, cared too much about that shit. And I just didn't, you know. Stand up too for much myself. about what? I don't know. Still, I was just maybe nervous. Just yeah, to stand up not for have, yeah, not have yeah. a backbone. Well, when it I, takes a lot. I hit a certain age, and I was you know a little bit better. But even even you know as an adult, I you know now I will say anything. You know, I'm yeah. I'm the one to make things awkward now. Right. I go out of, like I don't go out of my way, but if something is wrong or something's not right, I will you know I'll speak my mind. He'll address it, confront yeah, the person, or what? Regardless of who you are, if you disrespect yeah. me or you do something disrespectful. You know, right. somebody I know, you know, and I'm generally very respectful about it. Right. Though. You are. You know, you definitely are. Even when we fight, I think because... 90% of the time <laughs> I'm yeah. respectful. Not saying I'm 90% of the time right, but yeah. about, about like 85%. Well, on a respectful tone, like there's like never any screaming or anything like that. So let's go like sit down and talk, maybe a stern voice. Of, never. Know. Been never sick. really any screaming yeah. like not Maybe usually like twice in like eight years that's like never really any that's like kind of not even once in a while yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah. pretty good but yeah i think that's something people need to work on holding their stuff together when they're angry i still have to do it sometimes too we all do i think it's just something that we're working on you know? Yeah, when I'm in that mood, I just I'm gonna be a dick, and there's I generally warn her. I'll be like, "Listen, I feel miserable. I'm probably gonna be a complete asshole tonight. And if I'm like working in the garage on a snowmobile or something like that, like or if I'm, you're getting frustrated and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I go into this so dick it's mode. kind of like the thing when your dad's like hold the flashlight and he's yelling at you. That whole thing. Oh man, yeah. That's I like everything goes wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to change the oil on this car that I've never changed oil. It, I'll be all right. Then, like, the I oil's know, everywhere. Or strip a lug nut or something. Yeah. I just, something goes wrong. That's really funny. So, um, anything else changed you as a person? Oh my God, my dog. I had this dog. This is probably, this had to have been, this probably warped my mind. It was like third or fourth grade. Oh. In, uh, yeah, my grandma that I spoke of earlier that I love so much, she mm-hmm. uh, she trapped a, um, I think it was a chipmunk, pretty sure it was a chipmunk, in like those live traps. So, um, so they're getting in her bird seed. So what she do is she trap them, she bring them to Forest Park in Camden. That's, that's my grandma. <laughs> what a better place. Yeah. And people that knew her would like love that story because they could picture her doing that. She was an animal lover. <laughs> She's a good person. And um, so I decided she picked me up from school with one of them fresh in the car in this cage <laughs> running around. Like on the seat. Yeah. <laughs> and she asked me if I wanted to let it go. Like she was thinking, you know, I'm going to pick fun. him up from school, surprise yeah. him. He can let this chipmunk go. She was all excited about it. So we go to my house and I go to let it go. But I decide to let my dog get it all, get the dog all excited. So I open up this cage. I, don't even hear this. I let this chipmunk out. The chipmunk runs across the road. My dog chases after it gets hit right in front of me by a station wagon that never stopped. Like this just old station wagon. It just just kept going. And like that moment, just like hearing that dog get hit and like just like laying there in the sun. It was a really hot day. And That's sad. Oh, yeah. You know, That's my, and my grandma and my grandma felt horrible. You know, like Oh my she, gosh, yeah. I just Of course she did. Who would have thought, you know, but. Well, I don't think she thought that you would do it right then. You stopped there for a minute and then you, I, you decided know, I to I pointed it her go. right at the road. I mean, it was definitely partially my fault. But. Well, yeah. I mean, mm. kind of all your fault. But. Oh, man, it makes me go to another another dog story immediately. Sorry. sorry I but. mean. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. What? The trauma. Oh, the freaking meatball. I, I thought, yeah, you were going to say Anybody that knows me that. knows the story. The yeah, meatball I've told, story. I've told the story a million times. So like, yeah. Uh. <laughs> I was I was with my ex-wife and we we're I think I was 18 at the time 
And uh, I get a phone call living in my apartment. That phone call. I bet a lot of people have gotten this phone call. Hey. And my mom calls me. She's like, hey, uh, Matt, uh, Sadie just died. And it was, that was my dog. That was your dog. Like, yeah. I raised her yeah. after Tippy got hit and killed. I raised this dog. And, like, I carried her around with me everywhere. She was a flat-haired retriever. Like a black. So pretty much a black lab with long hair or a golden retriever. That's black. <laughs> but uh and um i raised her and she was such a good dog and I, I don't remember how old she was for some reason maybe like eight or nine but yeah my mom apparently fed her a meatball like a leftover meatball because they're gonna throw them away and that dog's chewing on this meatball or uh, football right now <laughs> meatball football same thing um anyway so my my mom apparently gave the dog a meatball the dog went to eat the meatball and started choking and this is going to sound horrible but my mom just like let the dog outside because she was choking i thought maybe but it was going to spit it up this dog time. would choke yeah. on everything all the time yeah. every time she had a rawhide bone her entire life for nine years or so this dog would be like <laughs> don't and, like, puke it do back that. up and like, eat it like don't they chew it and kind of swallow it and then throw it back this up? dog did it it's whole life, so I'm not saying my mom's at fault here. I just because if well, anybody, how would she know? Well, no, I'm saying for people that are listening, though, they're probably people that are very sensitive to animals. Like, wow, what a piece of shit! Yeah, my well, mom lets the dog out in the garage, uh, doesn't yeah. think anything of it, opens the door five minutes later, the dog's laying there dead. Mm. And uh, so I remember getting the phone call, and I remember driving there. I remember Arrow. What? She just wants to play. Go lay down. Get here. So your mom. So my left. mom, my mom called, told me the dog just died. I'm like, yeah. what happened? She told me she choked on a meatball. And you're like, how the heck did, and, uh, did that happen? So I, I, myself and my ex wife get in the car and drive to Camden. You know, I go to my mom's house and sure enough, I see the dog laying there in the garage. I go inside and I remember sitting on the couch where I'm crying. I think we're all Aww. crying. My dad gets home from work. You know, working the most like redneck blue collar job in the world. God bless him when he was still working there. And he walks in, he opens up the door, he looks at my mom and all of us sitting there on the couch crying. Our dog just died. She's still fucking laying there in the garage. He's like, Jesus Christ. Good thing I didn't eat that fucking meatball. And I just remember I've never in my life been like crying and so sad, but laughing so hard. Like he was so, so serious. And my mom's like, I can hear her now. Yeah. I don't understand why all of our friends' dogs live to be old. Oh. My dad's like, that's because I fucking feed them dog food. <laughs> oh, oh man. So, so horrible. Yeah, so horrible. anybody that knows my dad, they could definitely picture him saying that. But um, Anyway, horrible. yeah, that, that's another moment that changed me. I don't want to keep saying sad stories about dogs dying. Oh, man. But... I, I may not know these stories, by the way. We're learning as we go. Yeah, so, so uh, years ago... At my dad's, like, the newer house, you know. So, years and years ago, we had a golden retriever puppy. Got hit by a car and died. So, we got the new house. And my dad got a new puppy golden retriever. Really, really cute. And my dad and his wife at the time left to go to the store. The dog was outside. And someone, we're alone. Us kids are alone at the house. Someone knocks on the door. He's like, um, I think we might have just hit your dog. And we're like. What, freaking out i don't even know how old we were like 14 maybe something like that mm. and when my dad got home at least they stopped though and said something you know because people don't do that anymore they just hit the dogs and go or whatever um my dad had to get a bucket and a shovel to go pick up the poor dog and i remember on our back like sliding glass doors the dog was dead but the breath was like still on the door mm -hmm. from the dog like like at the door watching us and that just like is like in my brain so yeah. i was like how is the breath still on the door and the dog's dead mm. you know so that was really really sad and my dad's like all right we're not getting another golden retriever because that isn't working <laughs> and then i guess i think he got um the border collie i think that's when he got logan mm. had him for years but that's really really sad let's not talk about that stuff anymore yeah i was just thinking happier and my but my next moment that changed it's, <laughs> it's not it's not happy but it uh, is happy because okay. it worked out. Uh -huh. um, so it was, I just remember when my youngest kid was a couple months old getting like um, a raspy cough in the middle of the night. Mm. He stopped 
breathing almost and he was he was started coughing he was so raspy and croupy yeah that he couldn't breathe and he was getting worried and you could see the more worried Aww. about them when they're like that they get more worried and when you get scared and you get anxious you your heart rate goes up so it causes you want to breathe more and it's a horrible horrible combination mm-hmm. and i remember calling 911 in the middle of the night telling them um i'm on the way to the hospital and it was right after i got done working for the police department so, you know, I, I knew how things operate a little bit. I asked them for, if they could give me like a courtesy transport or something like that um, to the hospital. But cause I yeah. said an ambulance isn't going to be quick enough. And I was flying through Rome and I remember a police officer, I'd like to do a shout out to him, but I don't know if he'd want me to, um, but a, a police officer that um, I've known for a long time. Uh, he um, like pulled in front of me and put his lights on and um, led me to the hospital. And, um, you know, that, you don't know that that could have saved his life. Yeah, no kidding. You know, um, that's crazy. Hey guys, stop. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I just remember when we got to Rome Hospital, and I remember him, mm. like he looked so worried. It was a, and like I brought him to the ER, and all the nurses and I'm assuming <laughs> um, providers or whatever that were there, they looked scared shitless, and that was when I'm like. That's when you got scared. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 And then yeah. You know, the the fix for the whole situation was literally cold air. I remember this mm-hmm. oh, there was an old school doctor there and he's like, you know, he's like, anytime this happens again, you bring him outside in the fresh winter air. Yeah. And it'll clear up and bring down the swelling in it. Every time it happened, I mean, it actually happened for a couple of years on, on and off. Yeah. Since we've been together. Yeah, know? it has. And it it's helped. That's kind of crazy. What are you doing, you weirdo? Um yeah, actually, one of my daughters, when I was pregnant with one, one was about a year and a half or so, and she had got, what? Keep going. She got RSV. So that was scary, though. I was in the hospital with her for like three days. So that was kind of scary for me, mm-hmm. alone, of course. Oh, Arrow. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> she looks she's enormous. The most awkward dog on All the right. planet. Um, yeah. She's so emotional. <clears throat> things that change me. I mean, obviously having kids, but. You know what are little things that change people, I think? I remember years ago, I was at the laundromat and I was in there with my girls. And you know how a laundromat is. You go in there, put your clothes in, it takes forever. They have to switch it, and the dryer takes forever. This woman, I think it was a woman. Uh, she told me that my kids are so well behaved. I've heard that my whole life for the most part. Yeah, no, for real. And it just makes you feel like, okay, maybe I am doing an okay job as a parent. Yeah. You know, cause you know, kids when in the laundromat waiting there and there's not like nothing to do, you know, they get bored and antsy and run yeah. around and are crazy. But when People that are strangers that don't know you, don't know your kids, and say something like that. It just no, that's pretty cool. Gives you a little bit of umph to be like, all right, I'm doing okay, you know, I guess. That's something you just reminded me of, and kind of a tangent, but okay. you know, letting people know, like, if people are doing good mm-hmm. at things, let them know. Like, yes. give people compliments. Like, yeah. that's I've been doing it for quite a while now, and I've just I've been going out of my way to be nice to people, and yep. just like X, you know, I've always been pretty nice to people, but I really. I mean, leaving positive feedback and stuff. I just, I feel like you've been really good at that yeah. for a long time. Not just now. I feel like no, no, you've been but more really, so, definitely more, more so now. now. But yeah. you've always been. That well, you can always that's... do more. Everybody right. can always do more to yes. be nicer to people. Yeah, always. I agree. I don't care who you are. Like, it's like, yeah, I've always been a good person. Okay, you could be better. You yeah. know. Yeah, there's always places to improve. Yeah. With everything. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh. I want. I want to talk about. Before you go there, I don't want to lose this. Okay, go, go, go. go. Things that changed me, probably the most, one of the most changing things was going through a divorce. And it it wasn't the divorce that was um, hard, but being somebody that when I was, when I was young, I was always in a relationship. That's what I was going to talk about. Oh, okay. So that's good. Good. Okay. Yeah, Yeah. we're on the same. (laughs) Weird. So (laughs) I've always been in a relationship ever since I was Mm -hmm. 14 and, you know doing the whole, you know, we met each other and we stayed together from 14 for many years. Mm-hmm. And um, that's the thing people don't realize, like, 
just because you're a guy, it doesn't mean you are somebody that wants to just sleep with everybody type of thing. And when I was newly single, I was like, oh, I'm so used to being with people. I went from, you know, like, being with one person just to talking to a lot of women and all of a sudden I got this newfound attention mm-hmm. and I was like, what's this? this is yeah. Awesome. Like, holy fuck. <laughs> and, um, so cool. and I, I, I don't know what it was, but like, I was just, I was talking to so many people. I couldn't even remember or keep track of what conversation I had with who. Yeah. Like, this is fun. And then, you know, this same time frame about when like online dating, like Tinder and stuff actually kicked off. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I just, I don't so you, the way you are is you always feel like you kind of need someone there and not just to have someone there. Oh man, I You're remember. You're really about sharing your experiences with somebody. Yes, but I, I remember specifically talking to so many girls. No, no. It <laughs> no sounds it's okay, funny. it's funny. But I remember yeah. just talking to like so many people and I went on break at the, and it was when I was, was working in bingo years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I went to go check my phone. And I had no new messages from any of them. Ooh, and I was like, okay. holy fuck. Like, that's when I realized I had a problem. Like, I was like, I'm not doing okay because I don't feel Aww, okay right now. And that, then, like, uh, kind of made you feel yeah, like. It's always been my thing. Why are you licking me? Go find a toy. I think someone under the couch. I think there's a couple things under the couch that she wants to get, but we can't get it at the moment. We'll get it later, baby. Okay. So yeah. So you had no comments, no text messages, nothing. Yeah. From so people. I freaked out, and then I just realized, like, like that's always actually been <clears throat> one of my major problems. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't be alone. Mm-hmm. I was just so used to always having someone there. I think. Yeah, and I've heard a lot of people feel <sighs> the same. Yeah. There's been a lot of people um, that I've spoken to in the past ho- forever that feel like you do. Mm -hmm. so for me i'm the opposite i have been single for a long time before and enjoyed it like being on my own doing whatever the hell i want to do you know um which it's like i love having someone there but at the same time i think it's just i'm you even when i was with my ex for seven years we weren't always together ever hardly you know what you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. like I, even though I was like with someone, I was acting like I still was w- with someone, but not physically with them, I guess. There's a, there's a lot of people that I think act like that now. They're just together, but they like are not together. So right. many people I know are like that. And it's sad. And I feel like it's such a waste of time and a waste of love. Like yeah, when you two just- There's somebody for everybody. Yes. Just go on your separate ways, find that person. But- for me, I'm totally okay with was like I, totally sa- okay I settled with that. for her, but you know, everyone else should not do that. <laughs> You're mean. Um yeah, I I was okay being single. And you were not okay being single. No, I freaked out. I, I was always dating somebody I went from Yeah. You know, to this yeah. day. Yep. And you know, there's worse. There's <laughs> You're worse. like, I'm always dating someone. Yeah, to this day. <laughs> no, I mean, I think we're dating, right? Still, we still are dating. Oh. Every date, we're still oh. dating, babe. Oh. Hmm. So cute. Mm. Okay, so yeah. So when you when you were single, and you weren't um, sleeping around, or if you weren't talking to a lot of people at that time, it's like, was that hard for you? Were you like so lonely where you're just like depressed because oh, you yeah. just didn't have someone? Yeah. And when you go, when you have a, and it's really hard because not many people, maybe a lot more people experience than I thought, mm-hmm. but it's, it's a crazy feeling going from having a family, mm-hmm. having kids, wife, kids, mm-hmm. house, dogs, cats, and having the whole, the, the whole book. Of like, a yeah. Like literally having perfect, the American like, dream, yeah. you know, till all of a sudden being single, living mm-hmm. in your parents' basement. Yeah. Like. Yep. If that doesn't fuck with people, I don't know what d- would because yeah. I mean that definitely changed me. Yeah. Like, and I don't know if it was always for the better either. I think me joining the army changed me for the better. Like that mm, was yeah. that was a smart decision because I don't know. I I just needed purpose and that gave me purpose at the time, which gave me confidence. Yes. And, and then, it's, yeah, it's funny because um, like we talked about before, you didn't join when you were eighteen. You joined when you were 27 way older. yeah I was driving by the freaking recruiter's yeah. office and I tried to go active duty infantry I'm like because when I was 20 I tried to go infantry with my 
best friend mm-hmm. and I pussy out the last second yep. and didn't go, didn't sign up with him. He ended up going to Afghanistan. I never deployed. Lucky bastard. I say lucky. I don't know. Well. But um, then when I was 27, I decided, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I've always wanted to join the military. I didn't want to fuck up my family. I'm like, yeah, my family's already fucking broken now. Might as well. I tried to go active duty and it, the recruiter was a lazy recruiter and lied to me. <laughs> And he told me That's that, up. you know, he just must not want to do all the paperwork for all the dependents. You know, cause he's like, you have three kids. And he's like, yeah, he's like, he's like, they're not going to let you in. Like blatantly told me that lied to me. So I think it was a, wow. mar- it was a Marine infantry actually. Mm. Uh, I think it was Marine infantry. He, 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 no, he might've been honest. So I don't know. But so I, um, then I went to go, um, infantry and I talked to a reserve recruiter, which also technically lied to me. He's like, sorry, there's no, there's no infantry in the reserves. He didn't tell me I could have went national guard, which is pretty much the same thing in infantry, but are but, they trying to get you guys to do stuff? Yeah. Are they yeah. That? No, he talked me into being a combat engineer. Okay. I bet and, this happened to a lot of people out there oh, too. Wow. Yeah. He talked me into being a, he's like, oh, it's pretty much infantry, but with explosives, you know, like, which oh, is cool. It's an <laughs> insult to infantry to say that oh. is it should be in my opinion. I'm just okay. being honest. Cause like, I'm sure there's some good light units or whatever. All right, I'm not going to talk about, I'm not going to talk negative about common engineers on a podcast because there's no negativity, right. but I don't think there's bad as, if, as infantry. Right. And I'm a common engineer was anyway. Anyway. So you, talking about you, when you were lonely, you're like, I'm going to join the army. Why yeah. not? Kind of spur them on. Literally like, drove by like the recruiter's office, decision. signed up, didn't yeah. put any thought into it. I'm like, yeah. You know, but and I don't regret any. I made a lot of nope. decisions like when that, you just like I swiped it. left. Just kidding. You're such a weirdo. When, um, I don't know what I was just gonna say. My brain just went. Um, so you join the army because you're kind of like lonely and stuff, and then, <laughs> um. And then, oh, hi, honey. Go ahead. Go. So. She wants me, not you. Just saying. I know. She she loves you so much. Come here. Watch your drink, babe. That's okay. Oh. Good girl. So you, how long were you on, we'll say, your dating websites until you and I met? How long were you on them for? Because honestly, when I think about it, I wasn't on mine long. But I was like, I am not. I was never. You sure checked off them list. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not really. I'm good. Um, so I was never about like the dating websites or anything ever. And I don't know. Did we ever talk about this? Like my old coworker was like, no, you're, you're getting on this and you're going to meet someone. Cause at that time I was like, so ready to meet someone and settle down because I just, where I lived at the time, you cannot meet people, you know, when town is too small and stuff. So when we like clicked on Tinder, I remember we were like, all right, like I'm deleting Tinder because I can't do this dating shit anymore on dating websites. Done. And we talked on Facebook after that, but I don't remember how long I was on the websites for like Tinder and I feel like there's a few another, months. I don't remember. I think. Yeah. Like not, th- that's it for you. Really? Huh, that's not long. I feel like the same for me. <laughs> yeah. I settled. You did. I made you. <clears throat> um, oh, yeah, we talked about that in episode one, how we met in our first everything, couple months. Everything, our first, yeah. And how I fucked up. And we worked through it. We and, we did. And, well, you know, it's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> I mean, airing that kind of stuff online is huge. I think getting that personal, because that's pretty fucking personal. Uh, there were a handful of people that reached out. And we're like, oh my gosh. Yeah, like, no, they made they, it worth it. hundred percent worth it. Just Yeah. Yeah. People related and they were like, holy crap, like that's us. Or that's what I'm going through right now. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you guys doing to make it work? And that's one thing I also wanted to talk about was like what we do now just to make our relationship like how fucking awesome it is. Yeah. You know, because it's like we're still in the honeymoon stage mm-hmm. and people are like, Bleh, but we are. I mean, we still do like the little notes, like I said, in probably that podcast. Um, we're talking to someone quickly the other day when we went to church and 
you know, he still, he loves me so much. Like even on any, any day, no matter what, he'll rub my feet just because he loves me. And no, I'm not who does guy. that? And he's not a foot guy at all. <laughs> feet are gross. All feet are kind of gross, but Except you yours. still, yeah. oh. <laughs> but you still do it. And we, we help each other when it comes to like the cooking. We help with that. You know, like if I'm home first, usually I'm home first anyway, so I'll like, I'll cook dinner and stuff, but Mm -hmm. you do all like my car stuff. You'll change my tires and stuff. Sometimes I'll come down and do it with you every now and then, or I'll mow the lawn if he's at work. Oh my gosh. For those people that live those lives where (laughs) arrows, do you you want to shake? Paul? Here. No, you're shaking? Okay. Um, For those people that live those lives where women don't do certain things, like. It's really weird to me. Yeah. People are like that. To be honest. She gets on the roof with me. She yeah. helped me patch in the middle of a storm. Helped me patch the roof one time when we had a leak. She oh, helps me yeah. change oil and stuff or like hand me tools if I need. Or like, what What did we do? We studied like the um, track on the snowmobile. Yeah. That was not fun, but we yeah, did it. That was a lot of work. That was it a lot was. more work to the point. I think I'll never do it again and pay somebody to do it. Uh, no, you won't. You won't pay someone to do that probably. You're right. <laughs> but it's I'm, like. I'm cheaper than I am lazy. Yeah, you're not lazy at all. You're not I, lazy. I, babe. I can be. I don't think you're lazy at all. Yeah. Depends on Unless you're playing a video game like all day and I'm like doing lo- like 10 loads of laundry and dishes and cleaning and all that kind of stuff. But once it's done, I'm done playing a video game. <laughs> That's weird how that works out. <laughs> um, I know some women are like, I don't do my husband's laundry. That's his laundry and stuff. But I'll wash our laundry and I'll fold his laundry and I'll put it away. And I'm actually, I steam his clothes. She does 10 times more than me. So nobody should feel obligated to do anything like this. Just saying. No, I just, you do so much that that's like, I enjoy doing that for you. I love doing stuff like that for you. I do. Why are you looking at me? No, like, eh, I'm I'm just, I agree with you. you. I do so much. Let's keep you that mindset. Do. You do a lot. And <laughs> um, I think one thing that changed me as a person was meeting you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you. Holy shit. Yeah. Forgot about that. <laughs> That's kind of a major thing. I don't know where I would be right now in my life or me personally if mm-hmm. it, if I never knew you. No, hundred percent. I I literally couldn't imagine. Yeah, because I was at a place when I met you. Like I was bumming. Like I was, I felt you know living in my parents' basement and stuff. You're living in your parents' basement when I met you. So that, that worked out for me. But, um, yeah, and things were just, I was just bumming. Well, you know, I think. Thinking poor me, why me, what I do, all those common things. And Well, I think for you, you're probably like, okay, I have three kids. And Oh, yeah, I felt insecure as fuck yep, about having kids. I know. I, and you live in your parents' basement. And you have this job that you're like, oh, I should have oh. a better job. And then there was me where I lived in my parents' basement, had two kids. Had this job, which was could have had a better I, job. I just have a funny story okay. well, while I have it. Oh gosh! You no, know, one one of the dates I went on with this girl. Um, oh. <laughs> I remember we were, we went out to dinner, and um, she asked me if I or no, I she never asked, but I didn't tell her that I had kids. Okay, I just, you know, never came up. That is okay on a first date. <clears throat> first date. I don't know, but don't know. so we went out to dinner, and then she's like, uh. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I just want to be honest with you. I need to talk to you about something. She's like, oh my God. She's like, don't tell me. She's like, you're married. I'm like, fuck. Because I technically was married still. Yeah. But it was like, it was just before we finalized the divorce. Yeah. So it was like years after. Yeah. yeah. And um, I'm like, well, and I said, I'm like, well, no, I am technically married. And she, and she was pissed off about that. And I'm like, with how pissed off about that she was, I was you like, You were scared oh, to tell fuck. her. She's that like, you let me guess. You have, a kid, you have a kid too. And I'm like. Yep, got I'm a like, kid. I didn't tell her I had three. I just <laughs> left it at one. And she's like, wow. And she was blown away, blown away. You should have said I have three, not one. Yeah, yeah I don't know well, if I ever told her I had three. That's really We didn't funny. go on many more dates after that. Um, and she she wanted to, but I just didn't. Yeah, you weren't. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I think a couple dates you can get in to having a couple dates mm. with someone to feel comfortable telling them all your detail, but also at the same time, like you and I, when we first started talking, we're so open with uh, about everything. I, Cause I was like, this is my life. This yeah. is how it is. This is how I am. Cause I didn't want to play the games of mm. that. You know, I just wanted to like 
take it or leave it. I, I remember in basic training, <clears throat> I remember being in the stairway and I had like yeah. 15 soldiers around me all, you know, we we're just talking about stories. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, Oh, I told them about my stories, like stories I couldn't say on. Yeah. Like, that, just yeah. like, like my single time stories. Yeah. And like, I just remember these guys were like, and like somebody would say something, but shh, shh, like, it was so funny. It's like, and I was just like around a campfire. Everyone's like, shh, like yeah. scary stories and they're, that they're into, but you're yeah. telling your personal shit. Oh man. If I only yeah. could, like, I just, I couldn't tell my kids are adults. <laughs> Even that'd be weird. But anyway, um, things that changed me. Yeah. So the divorce, um, learning how to be single and then obviously meeting you. Learning how to be single. That's interesting. Yeah. When you say I never learned like it, but you weren't meant to, I guess. No. No. I think um in our lives we go through shit to teach us because you don't know really what you want unless you know what you don't want. You know what I mean? In relationships and stuff yeah. like that. Like how are you gonna know what you don't want if you've been in one relationship? You don't know anything about any other relationship. Yeah. And that's weird to me. Not that not that I can't or I wouldn't respect somebody that was able to do that. Not at all. I mean, if that's her thing, rock yeah. it because that's awesome. Yeah, cause um, that was something like I remember up until, you know, like that's something I always did at, at that point in my life. I mm-hmm. took pride in that. I took pride in telling people I've only ever been one person, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. uh, that was just, yeah. Yeah. It's funny how you, like you and I are like the opposite when it comes to that kind of stuff, which normally we're like pretty like the same. Mm. Um, but some stuff like you and I are just different with that. Mm. Cause I honestly, even in high school, no boyfriends, Yeah. like went to college for a year, no boyfriends. I was good. I was a good girl. Yeah. Um, I can say something major that changed my life that I can probably get into for just a second. Um, yeah, so in my past relationships, actually, I think on one of the Facebook posts, I had said a couple things, but, uh, I was in an abusive relationship for seven years, which is a really, really long time. Um, and I won't go into like much detail at all about any of that, but when you're in a relationship like that, uh, it changes the way you think. So you definitely, if you're in something like that, it tears you down. Um, the brainwashing and shit makes you change who you are. And then when you get out of it, you have to learn to become not even who you were before that and during that, but you need to grow into someone that you were supposed to kind of become. And I think, um, when people go through therapy and whatnot, which therapy was awesome, um, you just become better, a better person coming out of that. And people are always like, Oh, I wish, I wish I knew now you know, what I know now, I wish I knew that back then. I've been saying that all year. I know. And that's what my therapist always told me that that's how people like me think, but you can't think like that Mm -hmm. because it's not anything. It doesn't exist because you know it now you would, there's no way you would know it then. Yeah. Um, so that definitely has changed me and taught me a lot of life, life lessons that I wouldn't have, you know, learned or even thought of, or thought that would even exist in life or my life. Yeah. And, um, and I am not a victim. I hate it when people are like, Oh, I'm a victim, blah, blah. I'm a survivor. If you want to say a victim, hell no. I hate that. Yeah. People are not held, held accountable anymore. No, but I'm, I'm not a victim. Um, I'm, I'm, ugh, I don't know what word to use. I'm you learned. I did. I learned. Um, but I, and better than just saying like, oh, I'm a victim because this happened to me. I'm better and way stronger than that. And I know I am. And I think people that come out of that shit definitely should feel the same. Because that takes a lot of Yeah, a lot balls. of people can't do this thing where they just be like, you know what? I was wrong and I fucked up. Yeah. Including, yep. you know, like that. that inclu- that's like everybody. Yeah. And everybody that they, if they can do that, they need a label for it. Yes. Like, oh, I was a victim. You know, they need yeah. a label. They need like, well, I was this way, but it's because of this. people can't just be like, you know, I was a shitty person. All right. Like, right. I made shitty decisions. I'm human. Like, why is that so difficult? You know? And uh, so people do make shitty choices and whatever in their life, but you're that much awesomer as a person if you can learn from that and do better. 
like even if you did really shitty stuff in your past in your life treated someone like shit or whatever if you learn from that acknowledge it you're yeah. accountable and you move on and you're a better person i love you for that yeah you know and then so many people use their uh childhood for well i was raised like this so this is why i am the way i am today and it's oh like my god man you're I, an adult right now so if you're raised in a shitty <laughs> life Fucking learn from it. Don't yes. use any other excuse. Oh, I, I was abused or I was molested or whatever the fuck happened to you. Right. People use it as a crutch to act a certain way. Yes. It's yes. so infuriating. I cannot stand it. Like, and people need to break the cycle and stop teaching your kids to be like, oh, poor me. Like, yeah. be strong and be better. If every person learned from their parents' mistake or whatever they grew up yeah. from, whatever the mm -hmm. hardship they dealt with, if everybody yeah. just learned from it and tried to build from it like this world would be literally like it That'd would be, be so a different. utopia like this world would be perfect yeah. everybody would be decent people and people need to stop judging people if they need help being like oh that person blah 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 <laughs> be like i'll help you you know especially yeah. if you've gone through it i'll help you yeah it would just this world would be so different yeah yeah so and i know there's a million different things and different tiny stories and stories that have changed people and changed us as people yeah but, all the stories people have shared on our page yeah. man that's oh my gosh thank you guys like that's literally insane yeah. to me i just <clears throat> the openness is like and then what happened was people were saying on our facebook page with all the comments is people are reading the comments and they're saying you that posted that comment made me feel like i should share mine yeah so it's like this cool. ripple effect and it just gives me chills yeah it's like, that's what we want. We want people to, we want to help people. <clears throat> that's why we're doing this. Yeah. And our people that we want to help are helping people because yeah. of what we're th shooting out there. Yeah. That's crazy. And you know what? Like, <clears throat> I, I, you know, man, I, I can't worry about what people think so much, but I know. like, seriously, um, if, if you guys do want to contribute to help, like one thing you could do is by clicking that freaking subscribe button and those liking and the sharing and yeah, talking about or recommending like that stuff builds upon this and helps us um reach more people it gets bigger and yeah. reaches way more people and helps way more people yeah and this apparently has a lot more potential than i ever imagined um so, uh, with the people that are reaching out to us yeah yeah we've had oh a couple oh my gosh i just i don't know and i just i want people to know with as bad shit that we may have gone through like our growth and our mindset now and just like our energies alone, yeah. like we, we are so there's stuff in our lives that we wish we could change right now, of course, but we have never like been better. Yeah. Like we're <laughs> so good right now. Like, like not everything doesn't. And when she says it doesn't mean everything's perfect, but right. overall in the grand scheme of right. things, like when you are able to be a hundred percent real mm -hmm. and a hundred percent authentic in life, whether it's with your friends and family but if you can be like that with your significant other, like you're going to improve every, yes. and I mean every aspect of your entire relationship. Yeah. And you're going to feed off each other and it's just going to, you're going to do better together <clears throat> yep. and your kids are going to see it and they're going to know it and they're going to do better. And that to me is huge when they see yeah. how good and happy and positive and kind and it's hardworking your being, your kids are going to feed your off of that Your kids will too. benefit off of your positive energy. Yes. Yeah, you need to invest and your in love. Your, that's huge. Yeah, that's something. I think there's a huge thing to that. I, I do too. I saw it growing up my whole life. I saw my mom and dad mm -hmm. hug and hold hands and kiss and You're stuff. You're lucky. And, like, I think yeah. that, who knows, maybe that's the answer. Maybe parents need to fucking show their kids that it's okay to be lovey-dovey. Yeah, but, yes. Yeah, show kids that you love and that you can be loved. That's yeah. huge. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're coming up on An the hour. hour. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, we're going to probably watch a movie or something. And I'm feeling these whiskeys pretty heavily right now. So <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. And please subscribe, yeah. comment, yeah, like, all that stuff. Please. It'll help us. Yep. Yeah. Well, you guys have a good night. Good night, guys. Take care.